Call to order. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Open Public Meetings Act Statement. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies in which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, the Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Augusta, Branchville, Lafayette, and Sussex Post Offices, and notice sent to the New Jersey Herald Star Ledger and the clerk of the boroughs of Branchville, Sussex, and the townships of Frankfurt, Lafayette, and Wallach. Mission statement. <clears throat> High Point Regional High School, in partnership with staff, family, and community, is dedicated to the quest for individual excellence. By fostering high uh, standards of achievement, we prepare students to become responsible and productive members of a diverse society. Roll call. Mrs. Anderson. Here. Mr. Ancliffe. Here. Mr. Don. Here. Mr. Kehoe. Present. Ms. Carmer. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Mr. Natero. Here. Mr. Mealy. Here. Mr. Boyk. Here. Dr. Ripley. Here. Executive session. Motion will be made the High Point Regional High School Board of Education or executive session to provide an update on personnel, negotiations, and legal items which are exempt from public participation pursuant to New Jersey Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, Open Public Meetings Act. Any discussions held by the board which need not remain confidential can be made public or appropriate. Minutes of the executive session will not be disclosed until the need for confidentiality no longer exists. The board will reconvene in public session in the cafeteria annex at the conclusion of the executive session. Any motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Who started it?
Thank you. All right, principal report. Mr. Randall. I guess you got I just found that out. Good evening, everyone, and staff and faculty. You could see some familiar faces over the summer. So it's uh, really you know, my pleasure to be up here and a pleasure to see all of them as well. Uh, on opening of school, excuse me, John Tallamy couldn't be here tonight, so I'll be giving the principal's report, and I'm just going to roll right to the athletic uh, report from there. Thank you to custodial, maintenance, buildings and grounds, IT department, secretaries, student workers for getting us ready to open up in September. They've once again done a tremendous job. We're very appreciative, appreciative of their hard work and dedication to High Point High School. Staff, parents, students, welcome back. Communications have gone out through multiple platforones, and it seems like uh, that one went out pretty well. Uh, the Genesis Parent Portal is a nexus of communication. And nearly 100% of our forms right now are available through that parent portal. Okay, so we uh, pretty much streamlined everything electronically, almost 100%. Uh, master schedule, thank you, Gib Carter, guidance staff, supervisors, and the CSD for working on giving us the best student center schedule possible. Almost there. We've got a couple more things that we're getting into with the uh, beauty schedule. Once that's done, uh, everything should be complete. So we hope by the end of this week that'll be good to go. Science slams in the West Gym will be completed uh, in time for school and for our students, staff, and community. If you got a chance to check out the, the uh, renovations to the West Gym. You wouldn't even recognize it at this point, just with the lighting itself alone. It's, it's made a, a complete difference there. And uh, we'll be continuing this year with Let Our Walls Talk, Wellness Council, Digital Learning Committee as well. And uh, you know, we're, we're very excited about the, the upcoming school year. We have some upcoming events coming up once the school starts in September. On September 5th, freshman orientation, which is a half day. September 6th is our first full day for all students. September 13th will be our ninth grade parent night at 7 p.m. And then on September 27th is our back to school night for all grades 9 through 12 at 7 p.m. as well. Uh, before I roll into the athletics report, I wanted to also welcome Lindsay LaDuke as our new vice principal here at the high school. And uh, we all welcome her. Here. I've had a chance in the last few weeks to work with Lindsay with both of us being in the uh, vice principal role. She is going to be a tremendous addition here to the school. Our kids and faculty are very, very, very lucky to have her. So again, welcome to Lindsay. Thank you. Okay, athletics, we just have a few things I just want to roll into here. Uh, the new scoreboard for the baseball and field hockey field is presently in the process of being installed as we speak. Well, I think they took a break right now. Anyway. The scoreboard was made possible through corporate sponsorships and donations uh, through the uh, company Side Effects, which is taking uh, the role in that aspect of our sponsorship. And uh, that's been provided through them and raised approximately $7,500 so far. That's just last year, and that includes paying for all the signage up front. So within the next three or four years, we should start seeing a considerable increase with our revenue. So we look forward to that. Uh, fall sports have begun. Currently, 32% of our students are participating in fall sports. One third, which is unheard of nowadays, especially when you have local football teams who can't field a freshman team. Uh, powerhouses like Lenape Valley will have 10 freshmen coming out. For us to have 284 of our student athletes participating in fall says a lot about our, our community, and our student athletes, and, and everything as well, and our coaches and parents. So, again, those are some great numbers. And uh, I just recently, about 45 minutes ago, returned from a seminar that was held at Skyland's Ballpark. It was called Tackling Opioids Through Prevention of Accidents. And I just want to leave you on a few, uh, you know, some statistics which I found startling. In 2013, in Sussex County, there were 13 overdose deaths. 2017, I rose to 38. So it, it's an incredible increase just with over those four years. And they're on pace for this year to have 38 overdose deaths as well. So it's really uh, gone up at an alarming rate. And uh, the one aspect or the one statistic that really stood out for our own kids, 14 to 17 year olds, 61% of 14 to 17 year olds who have gone through a tooth extraction were prescribed an opioid following the extraction. So that's just, um, you know, when you think about how it's really starting to uh, affect our high school age kids, that statistic alone goes to show you that, you know, the prescription uh, 
uh, part of it and was really has really gone has really been going out of control. So when you see those kind of numbers and you see that finally some of these you know a lot of the doctors have gone on board with uh, prescribing over the counter uh, prescriptions rather than the opioids, hopefully it'll, it'll help lower these numbers as well as statistics. So that is it. Any questions? Is that the highest participation rate? Yes, highest participation rate of any season since I've been into my seventh year as the athletic director, so definitely a highest rate. I just want to say that uh, the scoreboards were the work of, uh, of Mr. Van Orden. They did an exceptional job and uh, they look fabulous, and the work that's been done around uh, the campus has been uh, by and large your efforts. So I want to thank you for that. Thanks, well done. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, don't talk so fast, please. Good evening, members of the board, faculty. Welcome to the newest member of our family. As John said, wonderful to see you tonight. Um, I was emailing the superintendent of Vernon today, and he was a little bit, uh, he had glowing remarks to say about Ms. Ledoux, but he was a little bit, a little bit jealous that uh, she's now on our team. So, uh, and echo the Van Orden sentiment. We're thrilled to have you, and uh, Thank you. it is the summer, so the Farm and Horse Show is the cultural event. Uh, I know Mr. Gardner thinks that it is the high point in the wrestling match, but uh, <laughs> some say the Farm and Horse Show is even the greater um, iconic aspect of our culture. Um, five, I'm missing a few photos there, but some of our uh, most distinguished poised young ladies represented us uh, last week at the Farm and Horse Show and did quite well. And they are stunning and we're very proud of them. So it's, a nice, it's always nice to see um, four or five more students at the Farm and Horse Show um, doing, doing well. Now I have to present on park tonight, so the presentation may go downhill from here uh, and, and as far as excitement goes. On the agenda this evening is a request to approve five students uh, to attend High Point through the Choice Program. I want to thank the board for your support for the Choice Program. We are only funded for four students. Um, we continue to lobby the state and answer surveys and let them know that we believe that we could accommodate 20, 30, 40, 50 students um, if we became a Choice School. So we're hoping that uh, the new administration, new commissioner, new governor, will expand choice and that we could possibly attract more than, than five students. There is also an agenda item tonight for uh, a statement of insurance that we must publicly uh, proclaim that we have met all of the legal requirements for professional development. New teacher support, uh, James Seck, will be mentored. Um, Mrs. Corey Lowell is here tonight. She does a great job with our TNT program. Our evaluation program, uh, Ms. Maduk and I have, always, have already begun working on her training, which is rigorous and thorough. She'll be up to speed on Danielson and observing teachers uh, this year, which will be exciting. Uh, In-house TV, we have staff meetings, we have PLCs uh, daily. We have um, uh, numerous events where we um, train staff and provide them with resources to, to improve. Much of the funding, which is the next item on my presentation, comes from federal grant funding. So we're fortunate that many of the activities we do to improve um, professional development is funded by an outside source. Um, there are a tremendous number of legal requirements and they uh, almost never does a lawmaker stand up in training and say, I have a great idea, I'm going to repeal this mandatory training. But they do get up and decide we must have mandatory training on X, Y, and Z. So what we see regularly is a lack of sunsetting regulations and really an increase in requirements. Um, state schools has been um, a great asset, although it can be a bit tedious. It allows us to cover uh, the district from a liability standpoint and faithfully ensure that all staff members have uh, participated in required trainings. One addition this year we hope to improve on, all volunteers, uh, volunteers in athletics, volunteers in performing arts, will also get a safe schools account and will have to um, fulfill certain training requirements because that is the law and we need to make sure that we're faithful uh, in that area. So those are our, uh, our trainings, our PD program, and there is a uh, board resolution on that for this evening. 
funding, as I said, much of the funding pays for that. Our federal allocation this year was $307,000, and we asked the board that they accept that money, and I'll show you the plan for the use of that money. Last year, we received 300 and I believe it was $34,000. So we're down 8%, which is $27,000, relatively commensurate with our enrollment, but those numbers take into account enrollment, uh, free and reduced lunch students, and students with uh, an IEP. So ballpark, we're holding steady on our federal funding, but $27,000 is a real cut to be experienced. Uh, in the past year. Those are the various allocations of where we receive it, and here are some of our plans to utilize it. Title I has to be used to target, identify, and support students that need extra support, and we've allocated some areas where we're going to do that. Title II is specific to professional development, and we have $17,000 in federal grant money that funds that. $10,000 is required that it be spent on enrichment, and most of that will go towards our character education initiative. And the Perkins budget, which had been as high as, I believe, 80000 at one point, um, has been reduced to twenty, and we're hoping that we can get that twenty back up to 30 or 40. Um, Mr. Minkowitz and I just went through a Perkins audit which was one of the highlights of my summer. Um, I will say in my few years as an administrator, I have really been impressed with Trenton, how helpful they are, how responsive they are. Um, this was not one of those experiences. Um, it was a little challenging. But what we learned from the representative from Trenton was that um, typically when a new governor comes in, they remove five or six politically connected people near the top. Um, in the last two administrations, Governor Christie and now Governor Murphy, there have been dozens and dozens of people who have been removed and replaced, and it creates a little bit of institutional turmoil. Um, the woman said to us, I have no findings, and I will give you your report that says there are no findings, but I don't know when I get back to Trenton if I have a boss to give it to, to forward to you. Um, so they're, they're in a little bit of a state of flux, and it was, um, it was fine. We got through it, we were audited, and we survived. Our special education funding goes exclusively to support our out-of-district placement costs. And that number is approximately the same as last year's. So that's our kind of a breakdown of our federal funding, where we get it from, and what we'd like to do with it for the upcoming year. Our park results. We are required by law to do a public presentation of our park performance. And we were not allowed to do that until August 17th. So we are just days away from when the information was released. And here are, uh, here is a quick snapshot of our results. As most of us know, there are six park assessments, English 9, English 10, English 11, Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. Freshmen, uh, English 9 improved slightly from last year, English 10, I would call that pretty much holding steady at approximately 40, 41%. Two significant changes in performance this year. Our 11th graders did not do well. And when you look at the individual scores, what you'll see is quite a significant number of our 11th graders scored the bare minimum score. And when you see students with a bare minimum score, it leads you to believe that they probably clicked through and didn't truly engage with the assessment. Now, that's not the case statewide. So if you look at the passing rate for juniors from other districts, um, it wasn't that far off from 9th and 10th. So clearly, um, that's a problem and something that we need uh, to address. Algebra 1, as I mentioned last month, had just a phenomenal um, success. We targeted this group. We did several uh, unique activities to try and improve Algebra 1, and the results paid off. We more than doubled our passing rate. And this is required. Algebra 1, you must pass to graduate. This is dozens and dozens of students who are now in a position to graduate, um, where they otherwise would have to do remedial steps to, to get there, and we're very proud of that. Geometry, relatively consistent, and Algebra 2, also relatively consistent. This 
I, I have another chart I believe is probably easier to follow. That gives us our subject by subject comparison from last year to this year. You'll notice Algebra 1, I think that should have been a 19%, more than doubled our passing rate. Uh, math overall, anchored by that Algebra 1 performance, went up significantly. Our ninth graders did very well, and our juniors in ELA did uh, very poorly. So of the six assessments, one we saw tremendous improvement, one we've got to figure out what the problem is and try and fix it. Our overall district passing rate went up from 43% to 45%. We receive item analysis and evidence statements from the um, part. It tells you on every specific question how our students did relative to the state and relative to the, uh, the other handful of states. These evidence tables can be very helpful to look at your high flyers and your low flyers and to say, where were we significantly below our peers? And what can we do on those two or three or four skills to target them and try to improve on them? And many of our teachers have been in over the summer. Mr. Diodino and Mr. Drellick have been working with them. And we're looking at these results. Um, and it gives us data to um, hopefully improve from. Now, the governor has leaked his plan, but it has not been formally announced. Here is the uh, suggested revision for next year. Eliminate ELA 9 and ELA 11, geometry and algebra 2. That means the, the um, anticipated move is that we're going to move from testing in six subjects to testing in two. That is a drastic reduction in the emphasis on part. The two that remain, though, will be, they, they are and they continue to be, the two that are required for graduation, Algebra 1 and ELA 10. And we hope that we can attack ELA 10 the way we attacked Algebra 1 and next year stand here with um, really substantial success rates. They've also indicated that they're going to continue to allow students to meet their graduation requirement through the, alter the alternative alternate pathway, excuse me, the PSAT, the SAT, the ASVAB, et cetera. I believe this takes a little bit of pressure off our students to say, um, we will get you there, Algebra 1 and ELA 10, that's what you're supposed to, um, but we'll know by the end of 10th grade if we need to focus on getting you a passing rate in ASVAB or ACT or PSAT. Um, I think there's some good and bad in this. Um, the downside is the assessments have a lot of quality, a lot of strength to them, and we, to some degree, lose credibility in assessment when we say, believe in this, we're going to get good results from it, and then the state kind of wipes away 70% of it. Um, the plus is the state's wiping away 70% of it. And what I think everyone in the room knows is there are perhaps quality assessments that if taken seriously can give you feedback but the bureaucracy surrounding their administration is soul crushing. It is overwhelming at times. And so it saps some of the, um, what normally would be student buy-in and, and uh, support, it, it's a struggle. So we're optimistic that by reducing to these two required subjects, um, perhaps there'll be a better student testing culture where students will embrace it. Interesting to note, all of our students take the PSAT in October. There's no pushback. There's no uh, anti-PSAT sentiment. So much of the vibe about the assessment is political, and maybe by downsizing it, um, it'll be embraced and we'll have uh, some success with, with those two assessments. Questions on that, Mr. Miller? Any idea when the state's going to formal? No. No, no word. Um, if I had to guess, I don't believe, I believe the state is holding back because right now they're, they just completed the summer park administration. So probably in September and October, they'll, they'll give us the playbook for this year. So we, we necessarily question the validity of the results, unfortunately. But what we can point to is the validity of the SAT exam which our students and our staff has uh, demonstrates 
you know, the great work that's done here, and for five straight years, our students' scores in the SAT have gone up each year. And so I think, and I think collectively, we, we acknowledge that this is a far more valid result than any results that can be gleaned from the, because when, when we look at a number that says 40% and we increase, increase by a lot, you're saying, but that's only 40%. And so I just want to temper either good or negative feelings about that. It's good we went up, right, 100%. The reality is, though, those numbers are, are question, the validity is questionable. That's also, that's why I mentioned the SAT and the PSAT. Thank you, Mr. King. Sorry. Oh, um, Mr. Diodino, Mr. Drella, Mr. Tokar, Dr. Ripley, and I had uh, an hour conference call with a provider that we're contracting with today called Naked. Ms. LeDuc has, uh, has used it um, at Vernon. And the hour conversation with Lincoln, really what it sounded like is it's an assessment tool that in some ways mirrors what PARC was originally intended to be. Assessments that are given in the classroom under the guidance of the teacher that are um, bureaucratically uh, less um, entrenched and can give teachers um, solid data and feedback based upon um, how their students perform. Lincoln will allow every teacher this year a simple login and it will simply list all five of their classes and when you pull up your roster in Lincoln it will have essentially every formalized assessment that your student ever took. It will also have historical grades so I can look at my um, Jesse Strauss teaching sophomore American study history. You can go into Lincoln, you can pull up the students, you can see their PSAT scores, their PARC scores, their average in world history the previous year, and whatever handful of assessments we um, want to use. And that data can allow classroom teachers to group their students based on ability and set targets for improvement um, more easily. It also has common benchmarks. We have biology teachers in here today. They were very enthusiastic about it. We've got math teachers in here um, looking at it. The benchmark assessments allow you to, um, as a group, all the teachers teaching biology to decide um, to get one common assessment. And the assessments are all delivered through a computer. Um, they're graded automatically. They can link immediately to your gradebook in Genesis. So you can give a benchmark assessment or a uh, quarterly assessment, or, or any assessment you want um, on the computer through this platform. Feedback is instant, links right into your gradebook. Um, and done in common, it can be used as a talking point to try to assess, analyze, and improve with other teachers teaching that subject. Um, we're excited about that. It's a big um, platform. It has a lot of uh, capabilities. And we're excited to cautiously, slowly, patiently roll that out September 4th uh, and begin working with a platform that gives us um, better data to see how our students do. So that's our, our LinkedIn platform. And just a few, a couple of clips of what's going on on social media. Two of our top seniors at uh, Youth Trooper Week, Kelly Britt and Ray K. Milan, um, they successfully completed that program. Pretty cool graphic there from Coach Delaney. Um, it's nice in my office. You know what time it is because around uh, you start hearing the, the whistles uh, and you see the kids running by our office every day. So you know schools around the corner, fall sports are under swing, and we're excited about that. Our soccer teams uh, went away to Gettysburg. Uh, the boys team and the girls team had a great experience. Our hoops camp. I don't know who ever started that years ago. Really built a strong foundation. Um, nice experience, and another Eagle Scout for High Point. So we're very proud of Tyler Shore. Um, we seem to have two or three every year, and we're quite proud of those students. And Mr. Diadino, Mr. Drelk, and I went to a Google training hosted by Mr. Rich Hayesler. So one of our former High Point students is an administrator down in Quantic, and we met with a uh, gentleman named Rich Kiker, who works for Google. Very interesting training. Um, about that. And it is only three months away from the Ed Camp hat and uh, Ms. Jacqueline McCarthy works, it seems full time, uh, on this program and we're excited for a second year uh, of a Saturday professional development program at High Point 
focused on uh, humanities and technology. And I think that's it. Questions?
list. Questions? 
Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Conner? Yes. Mr. Intero? Yes. Mr. Kehoe? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Boykew? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Ancliffe? Yes. Mr. Buick? Yes. Correspondent. We have one item before us to address to our VA from Skywind, Cycling, Gyro, LCL. Uh, basically, it just says uh, Mr. Mikowicz, Skyland Cycling Club, sincerely appreciates the support we received from High Point Regional High School. The grounds at High Point were in excellent condition, perfect for the 300 plus cyclists that volunteered. That's why I was stopping traffic. Visitors were surprised how beautiful our area is. As a result of your support, our event was an overwhelming success. Thank you. From Michael Garland, the president of Skyland Cycling, and the Long Con. Director. It was a by storing event and we met them use our parking lot. <laughs> Good. Miscellaneous. Anybody have anything on the miscellaneous? Alright, public comments. Same rules apply. Step to the podium, state your name and address. You have three minutes. The section will be limited to 45 minutes overall. Anybody?
but yet my son was dismissed again and told one thing and done another. I don't know how we have, and when my son approached the coach and said, well, you know, coach, what's going on? Why, why aren't I, why aren't I playing? Why aren't, what's going on? Well, your stats. And, and he challenged the stats and said, well, you had a bad batting average. Well, he said, my batting average wasn't great. It was a 238, but I was at bat 38 times and I was on base 29 times and I led the team in stolen bases. Well, you had a lot of errors. Well, coach, no, actually, I only had five errors. And your starting shortstop had 44. and was 0 and 33. How does this happen? And that shortstop replaced an upperclassman who had much better stats than that. This is, I believe, an absolute disgrace when someone not only challenges themselves, but appropriately challenges a coach to prove themselves, and they're demoted for it. Uh, I don't know, you used up your time, but I have a question. Did you, did, who did you speak to regarding this? It's, it's a jump to come to the board bed with this. Well, I've pretty much spoke with everybody, and, and, and I went to, to Mr. Van Orton, but, but the first thing that I felt he did was advocate for his coaches and not for my son. And the last I checked, as an AG, his job is to advocate for the students here. Did you speak not with Mr. Coach. Talman? Did I speak with who? Mr. Talman? No, I didn't. I, I, I was, I was, I've addressed this I did it on multiple occasions, and I did it as nicely and appropriately as I could, and it was very apparent to me that it was falling on deaf ears. So I did try to go to the principal, but I was intersected and told that I had to follow the chain of command. Well, that's what I'm getting at, because to go from the AD to the Board of Ed is something that's kind of a jump in. We just went through this whole thing. Did, did, you, did you speak to Several him? times. Okay. And there's he no comes to me. And, and we did discuss it on okay. several occasions. And uh, I had spoken with the athletic director about it. I knew uh, Mr. Antilli that I would address it further. Okay. But, uh, and, uh, Give us a chance to talk to Dr. Ripley to find out what the disposition yeah, I just I, I just found that in life results when you when you start to follow something and you get no results, it's better to just move right ahead. Yeah, there, we do have to follow. Okay. I, I understand. Well, thank I, you. Thank I understand. You. All right. Thank you. Yep. Like I said, Mr. Tilley spoke with me on several occasions. We spoke on the phone probably five at least five times during which we had very positive conversations. He was respectful and, and dignified, but I did inform them that it would be. Okay. Any other public comments? <clears throat> Chris Carney, Frankfort Township. Um, um, I'm not really looking for any feedback. I just want to voice my opinion about from what I gather your budget for the teachers. Um, from, my, from what I'm told, it's zero across the board for three years. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair to anybody who works. Um, I think it's very discouraging for somebody. How would you feel if somebody told you you're not going to get any money? Uh, I think there's different ways you guys can handle that. Um, taking away some vacation days, personal days, so you can do it. Um, yeah, I, I always look at it, you make them dime somebody, it's going to cost you four. Okay. Basically, what I'm saying is if you don't have a happy worker, a happy life, then they're not going to go up the extra mile for you. Okay. I went to good school. I think you guys do a great job. Um, I like the way you guys are going forward, not rehiring some teachers, but it's enrollment is down. It's important. But uh, I just want you guys to maybe reconsider uh, giving them a little something. Inflation is 1.9. You give them 1%. You said, hey, listen, we're a little tight in the budget now. It's going to get better. I think that's a, it's a sign of good faith. And uh, I think it should be done. So I'm just looking for you guys to reconsider uh, that zero across the board. I don't think it's healthy for the school. That's it. Thank you. Any other public comments? Okay. Non committee board member reports and comments? No. You're right? All right. Uh, anybody with any other business? Welcome. All right. Any other voting to adjourn? All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.